Hi everyone, my name is Anna and I'm a children's librarian at the East Hampton Library and today I'm going to do an art video with you and what we are going to do is a fall pumpkin painting project. I know this time of year pumpkins are really popular, everybody's going to pumpkin farms and apple picking. I usually choose to do pumpkin painting over pumpkin carving primarily because it lasts a little bit longer and you can do things that are um, just in general fallish, not specifically Halloween. So what we're doing today is preparing the pumpkins actually that can sit outside because I'll be using an acrylic non-washable paint um, so that way they can handle the rain. You guys are welcome to use whatever you paint at whatever paint you have at home. If you use the kids paint it's going to be a little bit thinner and obviously rain will wash it off too. So if you use a washable paint just make sure that you put it either inside or in a covered area. So this is what we're working with. This is drip art, which I do a lot of too. So the things you will need for this first is a pumpkin. So I have an unpainted pumpkin here that you wanna wash it off and kinda of get the dirt and stuff off of it too if you can. Everybody's got alcohol wipes it seems right now, which worked really good. Then the next thing you're going to need is something to catch your paint when it drips. This is the one I used on the other one, so I have paper plates. These are just about the right size for my pumpkin. It fits in there pretty good. Um, you guys may end up with more drips than me, so cookie sheets are a really good thing to use. Um, disposable foil pans, even some tin foil or something. I've got a tablecloth on the table so it's covered. If you make much of a mess and you use something like this, you can just pick the whole thing up and throw it away. So a pumpkin, something to catch the drips, a table covering, and then you will need paint. And I have chosen three colors. The first we're going to use is black. Um, this is an acrylic paint that is very thin, so it drips and runs pretty easy. These are both acrylic metallic paints. And I have just the Sargent brand you can get off of Amazon, which is what we use here at the library. Um, these smaller ones just kind of test each paint, especially if it's an older paint, you may want to add some water to it. So both of these have water added to them and then I just shake them up really good. Um, I also have used in the past, and I have here with me, just the basic Craft Smart stuff that you can pick up at your local big box store. Um, so pick your colors, decide what you're going to do. You can do it all one color or many colors. Now, even though we're doing drip art, I do use a paintbrush, and I'll explain what that's for in a little bit. It's not to actually paint. And then always, for cleanup, paper towels, they're a little bit damp. Um, wet wipes are good for that too. Okay, so I am going to get started. I am going to start with black because I kind of want it as my base. So shake it up really good. Now, the goal here is for it to drip, and I'm going to have to do this a little bit backwards, so I'm watching it on camera. So I'm not going to start up here around the, the center where the stem is, and the reason for that is I don't want the paint to all pull together. So I'm going to kind of start where the curve is, and there's a line there, so I can follow that line. And the more you drip on it, kind of the more it's going to run the faster it's going to run you can see it kind of moving slowly there and each time i add a drip it goes just a little bit faster so while that's running down i'm going to take the end not the brush end but the back end and i'm going to take some of it and i'm going to just kind of pull it up this way and follow that line and then i'm going to do it again and that's how i get my paint all the way to the stem now, I'm also gonna turn over here, see if I can see it while you guys are also looking at it. I don't like it when it leaves a blob, um, but it has kind of quit running. So the same thing, I'm gonna use the end of my paintbrush and just kind of push it down a little bit to get it further down and to kind of finish out that little kind of drip point at the end. So there's one done and then I'll set my brush down. So I will do this going around periodically, just hitting um, random, I guess they're called grooves is kind of what I'm looking for. What you want to watch at first is to get the grooves. There it goes, now it's running. Hopefully you guys can see that. 
So I'm actually pouring my paint into the grooves a little bit and using that because the lines tend to follow those. Now if you're a little impatient like me and get in a hurry, then you can chase it with your end of your paintbrush and kind of get it to move just a little bit faster. And then if you look very carefully, you can see that little bubble on the end there that I want to get rid of. So I just push it on down and then that. So let's do another one here. Now they don't always follow the groove. Sometimes if you get too much paint on there and get it a little bit thick, you can see where it gets wider. So this is one of those projects that can take a while. Um, especially if you're using different colors like I am. You don't necessarily have to wait on one color to dry. It depends on how much you want your colors to blend together. Um, I do a little bit of both. Sometimes I'll work with one color and just set it aside for a minute. But if you look carefully here, you can see kind of like, um, get my hand matched up with the camera here, right in here where the green and yellow colors blended together a little bit. That's because I did that before they dried. Um, and then as I did the last coat was this really thick yellow here. Those are some I did at the very end after parts of it had dried so they didn't blend as much. Um, but it depends on how patient you are, how patient your child is, and how much paint you wanna do. Now, the other thing is with a lot of dripping, sometimes you wanna lean. You don't really have to with this, that's why I use the paintbrush. If I start leaning it too much, then I end up with a bigger mess. That one went really fast. So, you guys can do it the nice, slow, neat way that I'm doing it here. And if you want to, you can just put that on there and let it drip and see what happens. You don't have to neaten it up. You don't have to follow it. You can leave your bubbles at the end. You can just let it go part way down. And when I get a little further along in the process, leaving it just like that is fine. But when I get a little bit further along in the process, I will make some shorter ones. Usually my first round of paint, I kind of do the grooves all the way down. But you don't necessarily have to do that. You may not want yours going down that far at all. There's another one. It's kind of like one of those videos. I think they're TikTok videos that you just kind of sit and watch that are supposed to be satisfying so the paint drips can be satisfying I guess if you want to be patient enough to sit and just watch them drip so usually at the library I do a program close to Halloween but sometime in the fall and I call it a Halloween hullabaloo and this year because of COVID, we have a little more restrictions on the programming and we can't really offer an in-house program. So as you guys know, we are doing a lot with videos and posting them online on our different social media accounts. I'm not sure which one you're watching this on, but I know it is posted or will be posted to Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. So hopefully you can take a little bit of what we're offering at the library and bring it inside your home with the videos we are providing for you. It is a little bit enjoyable when it runs fast like that. It's a little bit like watching or almost chasing raindrops down a window in a car.
I guess if I do want this to be one of those satisfying types of videos, I don't need to talk the whole time I'm doing it. Just let you guys watch the process. You can see at the top here that my lines are a little bit wider and they get thinner as they go down and that's okay and that's where you'll notice when other colors start blending together. It's always a little bit risky to use black in a project like this um, because black is such a dominant color and it can kind of overtake things but that's why I wanted it as my base color. So there you go, you guys take a good look. You can see I've still got um, some grooves here, grooves here, so I've got place to add other colors. And this is where I was talking, it's a little bit wide up there, but that'll just blend in a little bit. So I love the metallics. I think they work really well on this. And I have already added water, so I'm gonna start working with my silver now. and get some of the grooves that are still left. Now this is probably not gonna run quite as quickly. Also, just so you know, I didn't clean the tip of my brush off complete, the back end of my paintbrush off completely. I just got laying on the paper towel, and that's okay. I want just a little bit of that black in there. Doesn't bother me a bit since I'm mixing colors. Um, but anyway, because the Silver is a little bit, it's still an acrylic, it's still the Sargent brand, but for whatever reason, because it's a metallic paint, it does um, move a little bit slower and it's a little bit thicker. Oops. Let's see if I can find a. Now, the other thing about this pumpkin is that it's a little bit flatter on some, than some of the others on top. So those nice, big, tall, skinny pumpkins you see a lot would be really great for this project. So you'll notice when I do start the pouring, that paint didn't have quite enough silver to go all the way down. I start it kind of where, where the pumpkin starts curving down. If I do it too high up, then what's gonna happen, which we're trying to avoid, is the pooling around the stem. So you can see here where I started, where it's just getting a little bit flat. And encourage it to roll down. You want it just where it starts rolling by itself. So you, if it's rolling down by itself, you know you're in a good spot. If it's not rolling much, that's when you wanna add a couple more drops of paint to kind of encourage it along there. Now I'm going to pick a groove here where the, the blacks are almost together on that one and I'm just going to squeeze right in the middle of them and you'll see how it starts blending. It went over on that side so when it runs down it's going to pull some of that black with it. Maybe. Just a little bit over there. Not quite a bit over there. So you can use your brush to really guide this any way you want. And you don't have to follow the grooves even if you don't want to. I do find it runs a little bit better when you follow the grooves. So I'm going to do the same thing over here where there's some black. And I did pour quite a bit more paint on it this time again because it's not moving. now. If I had the time and I wasn't necessarily doing a video, I would actually run to the sink and add some more water to thin this out a little bit to encourage the flow. But since I'm in the process of doing a video for you guys, we're just going to have to be patient with the dripping and watch it move a little bit slow. That one went right up beside the black. So in this case, it didn't follow my groove at all. The groove is kind of over here, which is where I started. But if it goes its own way, which it appears to be doing, then we're just going to go with it. The 
this is one of those things that I really, I mean, yes, you can use too much paint, but as long as you've got a tray down below, I wouldn't worry about using too much paint. It's, in this case, it's probably better to use a little more than a little less, since you are doing a drip project, and those do tend to take a lot of paint. Turn back around. I keep trying to work from my side where I can see. I'm forgetting to turn the pumpkin where you guys can oh now see that was my fault i didn't follow the groove so we've got a little and i'm just going to leave it you guys know how i'm when i do these art projects nothing is perfect we make mistakes like i just did drawing outside of the line so to speak when i missed where's it at where i missed my groove right here so we're just going to leave that we're not going to go back and fix it we're not going to wipe it off we're just going to leave the mistake and work with it as we continue So I'm almost done with my silver here, and as I mentioned before, um, I have got three colors, so I have one more color I'm going to add after this. You guys, you can do it with just one color. I think this would look beautiful if it was just dripped with black all the way down, or even the on this one over here with that green metallic, just dripping that down by itself, I think would make an actual, absolutely beautiful pumpkin. Um, I think three is a good color if you start going over you know, adding too much, then your colors are really get runny and start blending together. Um, so for me, three is a good number. Got a little bit of running here. More blending. That one's got a, moving quickly, it's got a nice big blob. Okay, so I'm going to tilt this a little bit so you guys can see see the top here. So what I've avoided is the pulling around the stem, which is really what I want to do. Last year when I did this, I didn't do it quite as carefully, and I ended up with just a big puddle there in the middle, which you definitely don't want. Okay, so now we're going to switch to our third color. On this one, you won't necessarily be able to find a groove because um, most of the grooves are taken at this point. But I do just try to work in between the colors that I have. So this one, I'm going in between two black ones. And again, I've got a little bit of silver and black both on the end of this brush here. So if you can find a groove, great, use it. If not, just let it drip and chase it anyway. Um, so, just try to pick a spot where you can go in between colors. I don't necessarily alternate or do mine in any order. You know, it's not like I did black, then silver, then purple. Um, in an organized fashion all the way around. And you can see that one kind of stopped a little bit early too, it didn't. So here, if you look carefully, you've got two black lines that go all the way down and then you've got silver and purple that just go partially down. And then we're gonna do another one here. And that's kind of running over into my silver, so we're just gonna, gonna spread this up a little bit. Give that a minute to see. It looks like it's trying to fit into the groove that the silver is in, so we're just gonna give it a little push there. Kind of stayed beside it and blend in completely. Now when we get to the top and bringing the colors back up here where they're starting to blend, it's going to end up very pretty here in a minute. It's kind of a little bit of a blob on the end, but it's okay.
And so far I have managed not to get any on my clothes. So you do have to watch your sleeves, especially if you're working on the outside of the pumpkin so that it's facing the camera. But even as I'm leaning in, I've managed to keep it off of me so far. So I'm going to finish going around with the purple here so that we kind of get back around where we started. I've got another oops here where I kind of dripped over on that side, but like I said, we just are going to leave that there when we make mistakes like that. We don't want to go back and fix them. We just let the mistakes work in. I'm going to leave that one a little bit short. And when I start with my colors again going around, I will make more of the drips shorter. At this point, I'm still trying to go most of the way down to the bottom of the pumpkin there. I think I got out of my line again. So we're gonna do another drip. This drip is gonna kind of blend right in between the black and the silver both. Um, it's carried over into them. So even though this is what you call drip painting, you can see the process takes a little bit more than just dripping. And that's just my preferred method. Um, and as always, it, when you guys are doing things at home, I try to show you a way to do it that keeps it a little neater. Now, if you're outside in the driveway and you don't really care about how messy you get, then you can just dump it all over it and let it run and see what happens. Which I think I had some kids do the first year I did this here. We set up a big canvas down in the Baldwin room and we did it on top of the canvas. And when the kids were done and I started to fold up the canvas, it was really cool looking um, with what everybody had done. The more paint you put on it, the longer it dries. So if you're doing it outside, the full on pouring and drip method will work pretty good. Okay, so even though it's a little bit hard for me to do this, um, I'm gonna, I like to chase my lines all the way down, but I'm gonna start forcing myself to stop some of them part way. Um, and now that my black and silver has dried and I've got purple on my brush, I'm gonna go, show you to see that one here, um, where do I start right here? So this is some purple, or I'm sorry, some black and silver together here. I'm just gonna kinda drag it up and down with my purple and give it a little drip there. <clears throat> So when you start getting ready to make shorter lines, I think the main thing with it is to use less paint so it drips shorter. Um, or to be okay with, you can see the little bubbles on the end there where it clearly shows you drip. If you're okay just leaving those just like that, or in my case I can spread them back up a little bit, um, then that helps you make your lines a little bit shorter. Then the other thing I'm gonna do is kind of start going down a little bit lower. Instead of starting, let's see where it's at. Here it is, okay, so instead of starting right up where the curve went down, I started a little bit lower on it. And that's kind of, it's really hard to do this backwards, but it looks like it's kind of running into my purple there. But I'm gonna leave that. So the other thing at this point, when you're trying to decide how much paint to use, obviously if you look at this one, um, there's still a lot of orange you can see, which is fine, that's what I want, it is a pumpkin. But if you look at how much is on this one compared to the spaces I have right here, what I focus on is how much orange is showing in this area at the top. So I want to get most of the orange at the top filled 
So at this point, I'm not focused so much on my grooves going down as I'm just looking at the top of my pumpkin and seeing where I need to pour based on how much orange space, how much pumpkin space you can still see up there. So if you look at that, there's not a lot. Um, on the bottom part I'm showing you mostly is filled in with a little orange. But if you look over here toward the top, there's, let me see if I can roll it all the way around. There we go. Now on the bottom you see more orange spaces. So those are the ones I'm going to focus on at this point to try and fill in. And again, I don't worry too much about my colors being close together or um, purple on purple, if you will, right next to each other because I'm not not really doing this in an order where I went black, silver, purple, black, silver, purple. We're just kind of adding them as we see space. Looks like I got a little part of the stem. So we're just going to leave that. Actually, it's still there. I thought it was going to stay on the pumpkin, but it didn't. I'm going to go ahead and pour this on both sides. I will kind of let one start on its own, but this way I can move just a little bit faster for you guys. So it's starting to look pretty cool. Pretty fit together. So I'm going to focus on this area right here where I've got a pretty big gap between the black and silver. We're going to start the purple just kind of right at the top and see what it drags down with it. But I am going to pull it up. It's still running pretty good. That one's making a nice wide drip there. So here's another area. So these are kind of what I've got most of the top filled in now, but I'm going back and looking for another area. Like here is a black and silver with no purple. So we're going to add some in the middle there. And it's nice if it chooses to go right down the middle versus working its way over into the grooves of the others, but it's also pulling some of the color with it. And if they do start moving too much toward the groove to overtake one of the other colors, you can gently guide it back with your paintbrush. All right, I think I'm going to stop there. I may add a little bit more later, but for you guys, this will this one that I did yesterday was dry this morning um, because I used a tempera paint. This one will probably be dried by tomorrow, although there are spots on it that are a little bit thicker than others. But this is my fall craft pumpkin painting using drip art, acrylic paints, um, mostly non-washable. So please create some of these at home and post pictures in the comments. We love seeing what you guys are doing at home, even though we can't come can't have you guys come into the library to do these programs. We still want you doing some of them at home and would love for you to share them with us. Thanks. See you next time.